Thanks for joining Rudy and me. We're studying the Gospel of Matthew, and we've spent the last several days in chapter 8. We're going to go to chapter 9. Here's another story of Jesus' healing, but this time we get really to the point, back to Isaiah 53, Rudy. So they get in a boat, and they come back to the own town. That's Capernaum, where that's their base of operations. Peter has his house there. Probably that's where Jesus stayed. And uh, there's some people, verse 2, who come carrying a paralyzed man lying on a stretcher. What a beautiful prayer, picture of intercessory prayer. We carry someone who can't move themselves. We prove them through prayer to the Lord. Jesus saw their faith, said to the paralytic, Take heed, child, your sins are forgiven. They came with one idea, getting the guy healed. Jesus knew what the real need was. He needed to be healed. The scribes said to themselves, this man is blaspheming. Blaspheming means he is saying something that's offensive about God and to God. There's probably more to that, and I'm going to ask you to turn to that. Uh, Jesus, perceiving their thoughts, said, why do you think evil in your thought hearts? Which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven or to say stand up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, stand up, take your bed, and go to your home. So he stood up and he went to his home. When the crowd saw it, they were filled with awe and they glorified God who had given such authority to human beings. Blaspheming, uh, do not bear false witness. Yeah. Uh, that's what I think this blaspheming is, bearing false witness. And only, only God can forgive sins and you're pronouncing forgiveness. Right, and uh, this is just the proof of what, he, what he's already been doing and that he has authority. And it also gives us some insight into, our, into the human condition. Why do, you, why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say? And really, your sins are forgiven or to say, rise and walk. They both mean the same thing. And so, uh, it's interesting that Jesus doesn't say, your sins are forgiven. He tells them, rise and walk, which leaves them to consider if that's the same thing. Yeah. Which it is. And yeah. so, every miracle is done by him. Yeah. And he, there's just the thanks, thankfulness that comes from it, but there's also a faith building that comes when you remember what he did. Yeah. And so as we read this, we know this is true. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Some people would say that we're simple-minded to believe that this is true. Uh, Last week in, a, in one of the videos, I was talking about the truth of God's Word, that there were almost codes within it that no one could write with that kind, with that kind of depth of accuracy. And I did make a mistake about the word Torah, that I, I had said that it was written every seven letters from the beginning of Leviticus, I mean from the beginning of Genesis to the end of Deuteronomy, it's every 50 letters. Uh, the intricacy of Leviticus, the center book of the Bible, of the five books of Moses, the holy name of God given to Moses at the burning bush, it is written every seven letters through the whole book of Leviticus. If that is true, in, in that kind of order, like some of the things that you have been saying about the authors you're reading, that Jesus does these teachings, then he shows the applications, then he does the teach. It's the same kind of way. God teaches on many levels. And Absolutely. why do you think evil in your heart? Yeah. For which is easier to say? And he's the only one that can say that. Yeah. So, loving our loving our enemies mm -hmm. kind of gets into this. Oh yeah. So that they wouldn't be left as somebody that was paralyzed. Yeah. 
because they are spiritually paralyzed, yeah. as we are. Absolutely. So just just a, a thought or two, and thank you. Um, Isaiah 53 talks about our healing, physical healing, but it really talks about our spiritual healing. Oh, yeah. And ultimately, if we're physically healed, but we're not spiritually healed, what does it profit someone to gain the whole world and lose their soul? You know, what would you give in exchange for your soul, Jesus said. That's a thought. Let me give, a, give me another one here real quick. And, and that is uh, that this man was paralyzed. So when Jesus said, stand up and walk, the man had to have enough faith and belief that he, he, he made a step towards God in his head. So when the will of a human is matched by the will of God, I put that reversed, when the will of God is matched by the will of a human, the power of God is released. So when God says to us, I will forgive you, and we say, Lord, I accept that, we're forgiven. When God says, I want you, whatever it might be, to do, and we match that with our willingness to do it, the power of God is released. Amen. And thank God for that. Well, we've referenced Isaiah 53 a couple of times, right. and Isaiah 53 is much like the Sermon on the Mount. Mm -hmm. uh, the Sermon on the Mount basically takes the Ten Commandments and illustrates them spiritually to the hearers. Right. That even though you may not be doing those in the outside, what God is really interested is in your inside. Mm -hmm. And Isaiah 53 does the same thing because he died for your iniquities. Right. And really we have to come to understand that iniquity is our thought process. Mm -hmm. And within that thought process is where we interact with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's the Holy of Holies. That's why when we go back to Leviticus and we realize that a guilt offering is when you break the holy things, I always wondered what the holy things were that you were breaking. I'd seen they didn't, they never did tell you in Leviticus what those were. Right. We find out in Isaiah 53 and find out further in Matthew's uh, recount of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Yeah. That it, why, that it is about the inside condition. Why do you think in your hearts? Yeah. The beginning of Isaiah 53 is, who has believed our message? Yeah. And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Good. It's being revealed right here. There you go. Pray for us, would you? Father, who has heard your message? Mm -hmm. May it be said that we did. Yeah. Can we also say that you are the arm of the Lord? Mm -hmm. Father, I just uh, pray for this Passover season, Lord. Mm -hmm. I pray that as Israel thinks about it as the holiday, the festival of freedom, mm -hmm. Father, that you would set them all free. Yeah. In Jesus' name. That's right. Amen. Amen. Rudy, thank you so much. Thank you all for joining us today. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow.